Look at it. Undamaged. Beautiful. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground, there's a lot of treasures to be found. Dirty secrets, dirty secrets of Scotland. Hello and welcome to Dirty Secrets of Scotland episode 16. The first thing I'd like to say today is just a big thank you to everybody that's subscribed and everyone that's um, sending me comments and messages. I really appreciate it because that really encourages me to carry on. There's over 230 subscribers now and the channel's only about seven weeks old so I really really appreciate that and uh, as long as it keeps coming in I'll just keep doing these videos for you. The last time I dug on this spot um, is when I found the three poison bottles. So hopefully I'll find some more. I haven't really found many poison bottles in the whole tip, but for some reason this spot here seems to be good for them. So let's give it a go. We go all dug out again ready to get into that face there first ball oh still properly wedged in oh we come little bottle oh it's not a Symington's that's cool it's not a Symington's Shield Hall. I had one of these in green a while ago, but this is a this is an older one with an applied lip in aqua glass. Nice. First bottle. This is my new sort of prototype of a trowel um, stroke. Well, monopod, not tripod, so you stick it in the ground like this. You have the phone in here, and then I can film like that rather than having to set up a tripod all the time. Let's see how it performs. So I'm now filming on a, let's call it trowel cam. I've got a bottle right here. And it looks like it's whole, it looks like it's plain. Yeah, it's plain, plain aqua glass though, so again, it's got age actually, hang on, there's something on the bottom. Let me have a look. I thought it said S Harwoods, it says Sharwoods. Yeah, it's a Sharwoods bottle, but a small one. It's still label on there, I don't know if you can make that out there, but that's label. That's a heartbreaker right there, that's a, um, I think it was a cod bottle. Um, yeah, Adamson's leaving that would have been That's upsetting, I'd love to have found a whole one of them But you never know what's round the corner This little jar thing Taste maybe Just fell out from here And this little bottle as well, in the same spot Yep, plain and plain Yeah, thought they would be but there you go, two at once. I'm trialling these three hand tools today. This is new, I just got this. Just been trying it now, it's actually pretty good. I think I saw someone else using one of these. Um, this one I've just been using for five minutes. I'm not sure about this one. It might grow on me. And then this is the old favourite, my old little uh, mudlark and trowel. Like a little brick trowel. Uh, I love this. But uh, I thought I'd just give these a go, see how I get on. I'll give you a report at the end. Got another heartbreaker here, folks, I'm afraid. Another one of these St Andrews Wilson bottles. Yep, I love these as well. That's a shame. And it's even the pictorial version. <sighs> so one. Here we are on um, travel cam. Got a bottle in here, which I've dug round. 
Ah, no I don't, it's a jar. And there's a screw cap. It's high up though, so it kind of makes sense. What does that say? Malted. I think it might be a Horlix jar. Hang on. Wow, screw caps I'm not normally bothered by, but this is actually really nice. Wow, that's nice. I think it's an old Horlix jar, yeah. There you go, Horlix. Aqua glass screw cap. Must be an early screw cap. Look at this, an old digging fork, really, really old. That might even be from the people that made the tip. Amazing. Could just be a chuck out as well, but that's of the period. Look at it, the ironwork. Lovely. Got a fairly big jar in here, which is wedged in. Yeah, it's just a plain jar. Let's see if there's anything in there. No, there's nothing in there. Okay. Just caved all this in, as you saw and found this in the spoil. Now it's still got the rubber around it, which makes me think that it's come out the neck of a bottle. Might not be, could just be well preserved for some reason, but I think in here somewhere there's going to be a bottle, or at least a bottleneck, that this fits into. Just had this spoon coming out of the spoil there, the cave in. Don't think it's silver, but I'll check it out. I think it's a, almost certainly a copper alloy. Just knocked this out of the cave in. Wee bottle. Clear glass, I think. AB Marshall, London. I think it's cracked actually. I'll have a look at that later. Nice wee bottle if it's not cracked though. Got a jar in the cave in here. I think that'll come down easily. Yeah. Yeah, just a plain jam jar, a marmalade jar. Anything in it? A whole lot of ash. I'll stop just to show you this. It's, um, it's a really clear example of the layering that I talk about. So you get the dark at the top. Then you've got this like greyish ash, then you've got this red ash, then you've got this like brownish dark grey ash, and then right at the bottom is the sand. So yeah, it gives you gives you a good cross section of what I'm talking about there. I think we have our winner. is really really good for scraping away the side wall but it's also really really good for exposing the sand at the bottom a couple of people have said to me that when i dig and talk you can't actually hear me talking so i've decided from now on um, if i am digging I'll either be digging or I'll be talking, but not both at the same time. And this is when this comes in handy. I've got this little bottleneck here. And I just want to gently take away the soil around it.
there's a large iron pin here as well. I might pass wedged in, but let's try the bottle now. There you are. It's a plain aqua glass bottle and it's got a hole in it. <laughs> Do you see what I see? That looks like a cream pot. That's a jar. I think the jar will be plain. I'm hoping the cream pot's whole and I'm hoping that it's printed. It's on a bed of iron, of course. In fact, you know what, I might take this out first because I think there's a just, yeah, oh, it's broken. Yeah, smashed. But I'd rather that was smashed than the cream pot. I'm having to remember not to talk and dig at the same time. It's a learning curve, folks. It's another Dun Raget. Dun Raget. Still don't know how you pronounce that. That's what it is. Yay! Another cream pot. Excellent. It has actually got a little bit of damage on it. But I'll do a little repair on that. It's worth it just to have another whole cream pot. Lovely. Lunchtime roundup. Got this, which was my first bottle, sauce bottle, SCWS, Sharwood's bottle, this Horlicks jar, which is uh, it's a screw cap, but it's old and it's cool. Um, I've got that spoon, which I think isn't silver, little top there, plain jar, um, this little paste thing, I think, just a plain little bottle, and um, this interesting teapot lid looks like tortoise shell or something, like that. Um, this little Marshall bottle, which is cool, but I think it's cracked. Bottle top, but I think that's cracked as well. Um, I actually found this on the surface over there. So I don't know if someone dug that and left it, but I can't see why. It's a really cool um, local beer bottle. And then the rock star so far is this Dunraget um, cream pot. Yeah. Let's keep going. My partner Sarah said to me yesterday, you know, you should actually tell the people um, how you got into the whole uh, metal detecting and the bottle digging and everything. So, so here it goes. So I'm a musician, actually. That's my day job, if you will. Um, and I used to be in a touring rock band and we went all over the place. And one time we were in York in England and I found an antique shop. So I went into the antique shop and they were selling little coins and they turned out to be Roman coins. And I didn't know you could get Roman coins in antique shops. So I asked the man that run the shop and he said to me, yeah, these are real um, Roman coins. So I said, well, where do you get them? And he said, well, I get them from um, people that metal detect on the Thames foreshore. So I went back to London and I bought a metal detector and I, bought a, and I got a permit as well to, um, to detect the foreshore. Um, and that's where it started. So I started out as a mudlark in London and I moved back to Scotland and then I got a few permissions on local estates and then when I was actually out metal detecting one time I found a bottle tip. So all these things tie into each other. They're all, you know, the thrill of the chase and the, the treasure hunt 
And the other thing that I do, as you know, is the, um, is the foraging, which again is the same thing. You're outside, you know, it's good to be outside and out and about, it's good for your head. Um, also, when you find things like that and you have an understanding of nature and, and you're in control of what you're eating as well, it, all of that is good. So anyway, yeah, so that's how I got into all these things and, uh, and continue to enjoy all of them. It would be really interesting to hear how you all got into your hobbies as well. So whether it be bottle digging, foraging or metal detecting, say in the comments, just let me know, because I'd be interested to see how everyone else got into it too. Got a ball right on the bottom. I thought it was a sauce bottle, but I'm not sure now. It may not be a sauce bottle at all. Wow, some size to that. I think it's plain, unfortunately. Oh my God, no, it's not plain. No, it's not plain at all. It's got a seal on it. Now I think I've found one of these seals. I think it's a, uh, it's Russian maybe. And the bottle, I thought it was aqua glass. But it's actually green. That is a beauty. He looks nervously at the bottom for damage. And there isn't any. That is an absolute corker. What an amazing bottle. Okay, I want to fish it out and we can have a look at that in the light properly. Now this is a stunning bottle. It says Zara on it. Zara. Actually, I think I might have seen a couple of these online. Um, look at it. Undamaged. Beautiful. All cleaned up. I even got my towel out, which I never do. But I got my orange towel out to give it a proper cleaning. Wow, 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 wow. That is an absolute belter. Got another live extraction here, folks. Oh, it's a camp coffee. A clear one, I think? Yeah, I think it's a clear one. Machine made by the looks of it. It's still got camp coffee inside it. Patterson's. Not sure I've had this one, you know? Cool. Got another heartbreaker here, it's a new one to me. Something B, Smith and Son, Perth, Scotland. So yeah, it's a new one to me. Shame it's broken. Got a very careful live extraction here. I'm pretty sure this is a hexagonal poison. I don't want to damage the lip by taking it too soon. That looks whole to me. Not to be taken. You know what? I think this is actually slightly melted. I think it's slightly melted because it's quite high up and they've been burning stuff here. Yeah, it's a bit melted, but I don't actually mind that. I mean, I'd prefer if it was complete and not burnt, but complete and slightly wonky like that is actually pretty cool. So yeah, it's a good find that, happy with that. <laughs> As you can see, I've got a double live excavation here. This will go first. It's a 
the big jaw. I think he's playing. I don't think that'll have anything on it. Yeah, it's playing. So that's number one. Number two is this. And it's another one of those it's coffee bottles or it's coffee or bottles. Don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. Let's see, I think it's gonna be playing. The last one was playing. Yep. Cool. I've got a pair of them now. Just had this. Pretty close to being a full bowl. Well at least half anyway. You very rarely find bowls or plates whole. That's quite cool, I like that. It's hand painted by the looks of it as well. I think that this is a glass ink well. A live excavation to find that. There's plenty of glass around it as well. Don't want to damage the top. Yep. I've had one of these before, but it was damaged. Fields. Ink and gum. Very nice. Aqua glass. Nice. Got some sort of jar here and a bottle down here. Uh, don't know if the bottle's whole, don't know if the jar's whole. My feeling is that the jar won't be whole. I mean, why would you throw it away if it was whole? Oh, doesn't want to move. Ah! <laughs> it's not a jar, it's a teapot. Oh man. Missing the handle as well. How funny is that? It hasn't even got any tea in it. Got quite a strange shaped bottle here. I've dug underneath it. I'm gonna try and get it out actually. No. Now. I was thinking about it. Oh yeah. What is this? Is it plain? Wow! A strange bottle. I wonder if that's water that's coming out of there. Okay, it's just water. A cool looking bottle though. I've never seen one like that before. Wowzers. I really hope that this is all. There's a lot of smash stuff going on. I was actually trying to get this ball out when I noticed this behind it. So I've dug the sand underneath it because there's so much above it. I'm thinking I can just pull the sand away under it and it will fall down. That's the plan. Oh yes, yes, excellent. That's my first printed jar, marmalade jar, ever. I'm so chuffed with that. Yay! Another first on Dirty Secrets of Scotland. This is my first printed marmalade jar. And it's got a little bit of damage here. 
and a couple of little chips out the bottom. But I really don't care because it's such a beautiful thing. I've been looking for one of these for a long time. And you can actually see inside how it's been sitting all that time. It's just been sitting in the soil waiting for me to come along, take it out. Cheers. After the high drama of the marmalade jar, going back to this, which is what I was here for in the first place. I've dug it out a bit. It should come out now. He says. Wow. Look at that, it's massive. It's like a blob top as well. It's a beautiful bottle. I thought it was cracked there, but I think it's just stuff inside it. Okay, I'm gonna take this out of the hole and show you. As you can see, it's an absolute beauty of a bottle, but that is a crack, unfortunately. It's cracked quite badly. It's Rosie's um, Cordial, which is what I thought the previous bottles were in a previous video, but this is really lovely. It's a shame, but it's how it is. I'll try and find another one. Just had this out. Regison's Fruit Saline or Saline from Boots Cash Chemist. Clear glass. I think it's got a bit of age to it though. And that's a new one. A summary of my digging tools. I only used this one for about 10 minutes. Not that blown away by it, but I may change my mind. This one I absolutely loved. This is great for just raking through. It's very, very quick. And when you're at the bottom, you can pull the soil back and expose the sand really well. So that's that's great, that. Um, and then this one, which I've used for years, I love this. Um, but it's probably better for just when you find something and you've got to get it out. You've got to be quite accurate and you don't want to break it. You get this little thing out and use that instead rather than the, uh, the more aggressive fork thing. So, yeah, I would say from now on, I'm probably going to use both of these. And this one, yeah, I think it'll be staying in the garage. Full time roundup. I've got this thing that just came out when I was caving in at the end and it's, it's really strange. It's, uh, I thought it was a light bulb at first, but it's not a light bulb because it has no filament inside it. Very odd indeed. Anyway, um, so I've got this big crazy bottle, got a little fig syrup, um, a jar, um, and a scoffee bottle or a scoffier, however you pronounce that. Um, just a plain aqua glass, local beer, um, melted poison bottle, uh, camp coffee, this little pot, but I won't keep that probably. Top of a teapot, which has got cool colours on it. Um, inkwell, check that for swirls later in colours. And then the Fields Inkwell, uh, plain jar. This is a Horlicks with a screw top, but I've never had one, so I want to take that home. Um, that's the little sauce bottle. Um, Smaller Horlicks and clear glass. That's the first bottle that I found, which is that um, sauce bottle, which is cool. These little three bottles and then the rock stars, and there are three. And this is the first dig that I can't honestly say which is the rock star, which is the best one. So I reckon it's between these three. I'll let you make your mind up. It might actually be that over the uh, first marmalade. I don't know. I like them all. Anyway. That was lots of fun. Thank you for watching episode 16 of Dirty Secrets of Scotland. I think that could well be the best dig so far. Just the finds were absolutely amazing. That green bottle, that Zara bottle, wow. And my first marmalade as well. So yeah, thanks again. And don't forget to hit subscribe. Underneath the soil or hidden in the ground There's a lot of treasures to be 
found Dirty secrets Dirty secrets of Scotland